I am headed to Alaska on uh, a cruise ship, my wife's birthday, and um, we're going to be hitting Juneau today. I'm not sure about the quality of any of the photographs I'm going to get on this trip because it's not really a photography trip, but uh, we're going to go up to Mindenhall Glacier today, sometime probably be around 2 o'clock. And hopefully grab a photo or two up there. There's also a waterfall um, that might be able to work. But the bad news is that it is super overcast and rain is forecast for the entire day. So that could be uh, put, a, put a whole damper on it. But uh, we're going to be hitting Juneau, Ketchikan, Sitka, and Victoria, British Columbia before we head back to Seattle. So I am sure at some point along this trip, I'll be able to get a nice photograph and share it with you. So if you go on vacation that's, you know, with your, with your family, there's still opportunity for you to, to create some really nice photographs. Don't think that it's impossible because it's not. And this video is going to show you how I manage to make it happen. It's still going to apply like you're going to have to get up early for those sunrise possibilities. And today was zero. I got up before sunrise, hoping to get some kind of uh, color in the clouds with the snow-capped mountains. And it just did not happen. It was just solid overcast. But uh, you can do it, and it will have minimal impact on your, on your vacation with your family. You still come away with some really cool photographs. Finally made it out to Mendenhall Glacier and we're hiking or walking out to uh, Nugget Falls. It's about a mile, two miles round trip. Uh, it's raining and that's not surprising since Juneau is like a, a temperate rainforest. It gets like 90 inches of rain and 90 inches of snow every year. But it's just sprinkling, it's not raining hard and it's a pretty trail. And uh, as we get some views, I'll be sure to share it with you. So that's a lot of water. It's a lot. Huge water flow. Wide angle. And probably a much faster shutter speed to catch that massive power as the, the water just comes, you know, the, the, as the water comes down off the top. It's just, it's amazing. That's really cool. Uh, from this spot, you really can't see the glacier at all, but I'm gonna get set up, get a good shot of Nugget Falls. It's pretty sweet. Pointless to try to show you the back of the camera. It's nothing but glare. So F11, ISO 100, and I'm not sure the shutter speed because it's so much water. So I'm doing everything from like a 13th of a second all the way up to like 120th of a second uh, because I really want to capture that water as it's exploding off the top of the falls. But I still want to have a little bit of um, a little bit of motion and the sides of the fall where the water is not quite as uh, heavy. So I'm probably going to end up blending two or, two or three shots to get the look of the water I want in different parts of the falls. Um, and to do that, I'm leaving my aperture the same so my depth of field doesn't change and I'm just altering my shutter speed 
and compensating with my ISO so that I've got uh, pretty much the same exposure that makes it really, really simple to blend those in Photoshop. So if the shot comes out after I get done with all this, I'll show it to you right now. This is a real nice view of the Mendenhall Glacier and I'm doing a four shot pano at this point because it's uh, if I zoom out to get the whole thing then it's going to be tiny so at 120 millimeters or so and zooming in uh, it's going to be a nice like six shot pano I really th think it will come out really really nice. And that somewhere around in there is going to be, it'll be like a 16 by 9, maybe. I'm not sure of the actual size, but uh, looks pretty sweet right there. And you can see the falls are over here on the right. This is where we were just a few minutes ago and walked back around. So that's Nugget Falls over there. And then that's Mendenhall Glacier that's receding at an unprecedented rate. It won't be around much longer. I did several panoramic images, uh, anywhere from it's like 150 to 200 millimeters. And no, no polarizer, no filters or anything. I don't think it's going to be a, obviously it's not going to be a portfolio image. The light's flat, there's no sky, it's just solid white. But the blues in that water, that frozen glacier, should pop really, really nicely. I think it's going to come out and be a really, really nice image. That is, if this little shaky little tripod that I brought uh, could hold that lens still for all the panels. If any of the shots come out, I'll show it to you right now. Believe it or not, I think the best shot is from almost up at the visitor center. You get up high and you can actually get over the, all these trees and bushes on this little island, which was kind of in the way at that photo viewpoint that they had. But from here, it looks pretty great. So I was at about 100 and uh, about 100 millimeters, 70 millimeters, somewhere around in there, and filling the frame with the glacier and those clouds that are just coming in which is absolutely just helps make some atmosphere and some separation uh, from that incredibly boring white sky back there. And then you've got the glacier coming down and that iceberg that's just perfectly situated, which was behind bushes and trees when I was down at that other viewpoint. Uh, so this, I think, is going to, a single shot, handheld, <laughs> is going to be uh, the best photograph that I come away with today. So if this shot comes out, I'll show it to you right now. Today we are going to be cruising the Hubbard Glacier. So we've entered the bay and we're going really, really slow. There's actually small pieces of ice, well, car-sized pieces of ice, small compared to the ship, but they're still pretty big, that, are, uh, that we're passing and floating. So we're going pretty slow. We're going to get up to the glacier and spend a little time there cruising 
uh, and being able to see it. So I know that I'll be able to grab some shots uh, with my longer lens uh, of the glacier. It's a really, really big glacier. It's one of the largest in North America. So very briefly, uh, I'm going to be shooting with my longest lens, 100 to 400. Um, I'm going to be at like f5.6. And then I'm going to be shooting at about a thousandth, a thousandth of a second or so, simply not because of, um, of a motion blur, but if if something starts to fall off, if I get a big, you know, ice piece that just just calves off and comes down, I want to be able to capture that. So I'll be in high speed, you know, uh, shutter mode where I'm just holding the button down, just just taking a couple shots like that, so I don't have to worry about it. Again, I want to be prepared in case something does happen. Um, and ISO will just land wherever it happens to be. Everything's going to be really far away, so I don't have to worry at all about um, about my uh, my aperture because everything's going to be pretty much in infinity distance. So 5.6 or 7 is going to be absolutely just fine. But, um, anyway, it's starting to come into view. The mountains are gigantic. Unfortunately, I can't see the tops of them because they're kind of occluded in the clouds because it's got a little bit of low clouds. But it's it, there's some lights playing, you know, coming across the glacier. It's it's going to be pretty. Just look at how the sun is hitting the glacier, the face of the glacier now. It's all lit up. It looks fantastic. And all of those dark clouds above it are really helping to frame it and just eliminate any kind of distraction so that the, the photographs are going to just be really, really gorgeous. Just this, these deep blues and whites and with the dark gray clouds, they're going to come out great. So I know I got some good shots. It's going to take me a minute to go through them, but I'm going to show you the best shots from Hubbard Glacier right now. in Sitka, Alaska. We haven't uh, docked yet. We are going to be touring downtown or the historic areas of Sitka. So it won't be landscape photography per se, but it will be some photography. It's, it's drizzly, rainy, overcast, um, cloudy as you can see, but um, there's some really old, old uh, Orthodox Russian churches in town that we'll get get a chance to see and check out. So it's going to be really some interesting photography. And um, if there's anything that comes out of it, I'll be sure to share it with you. So Sitka was a total bust because it's like really raining a lot. There's really no photographs to be made, and it's uh, it's coming down pretty hard. Heading back to the boat to get something, uh, maybe a cup of coffee <laughs> and something dry. <laughs> we still had a good time. Good morning from Ketchikan, Alaska. We're pulling into the cruise ship dock pretty soon. So I got up because this is the one of the few days that we're supposed to not have rain. <laughs> And sure enough, there's, uh, you know, as you just saw, there's a nice color on the horizon. The problem with shooting on cruise ships is, number one, obviously, you can't control where you are. I mean, you can walk around the ship, but um, your, your compositions are going to be limited. 
and uh, the other is you know, obviously that you're moving and so there's no way to do any kind of longer exposures with a tripod. Tripods are absolutely useless because uh, everything's moving pretty much all the time unless you're docked at port which doesn't usually give you any compositions there either. <sighs> so I, I, I was just you know hoping that maybe the sky would, ooh, the sky is starting to light up um, but um, I don't know if there's going to be anything to put with the sky, you know. Um, uh, cruise ship docks are usually in like an industri in industrial areas, and that doesn't usually give you really pretty foregrounds or, or subject matter besides, uh, you know, just the, those docks. It's not very, it's not very attractive. So uh, you can't use super telephoto lenses because it just magnifies the the problem you have with the movement just like the Milky Way you can't be shooting with a 400 millimeter lens you know on a, on a to shoot the Milky Way because everything's moving while on a cruise ship that's moving about you know five ten miles an hour you're it's you have to use crazy fast shutter speeds in order to freeze everything um, and at sunrise it's really dark um, but the sky is starting to light up and that is pretty. That is really pretty. But as you can see, let me just pan. There's the ship's, one of the ship's antennas. Um, there's just, that's not a pretty foreground. And over here on my right hand side is the, uh, that's the airport. Not really attractive those mountains right back there with that layer of clouds right in front of it is really pretty but um, it's there's no way to get a shot of that without all of the other unattractive stuff in it so uh, the, the sky is lighting up I'm gonna see if I can I might just take a picture of the sky I don't know but oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it might be something. Um, I'm using my 24 to 105, uh, trying to keep my shutter speed high, checking the checking the sharpness because, like I say, we are cruising and having a fast enough shutter speed uh, that it's it's going to give me a, a reasonably sharp photograph um, and shooting at a very open aperture in order to help that out as well because I'm not everything is really far away I don't have any foreground I have nothing close and again it's kind of like Milky Way you can shoot at 2.8 uh, the Milky Way because everything is so far away that infinity points that hyperfocal distance everything from there on is going to be in focus so even at f4 you know it's not the ideal aperture but uh, if you're focused far enough away that hyperfocal distance you're going to get everything sharp you know in the frame regardless so that's uh, i'm just trying to come up with something but the the sky is pretty it's getting really really pretty so i'll get a shot i don't think it's it's going to be worth anything but um i want to take it anyway i decided to come inside and and kiss some coffee um the observation deck most cruise ships will have them it's like the indoor area that's above the bridge and obviously you can see and observe everything outside it's really really pretty and I actually think I might have come away with at least a single shot this morning that's going to be that's going to be uh, good enough to show I should I guess to say <laughs> but um, if the shot did come out from this morning in Ketchikan Alaska I'll show it to you right now That's a wrap from Alaska. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'd love to hear from you. So be sure to leave a comment below. Don't forget, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.